It's uh, 10 a.m. for us, uh, 9 a.m. in the UK time. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good whatever it is, wherever you are. That's the uh, advantage with this online meetings, right? Our hopefully last globe, virtual global upset after this, we will go back to in-person conferences, as I said yesterday already. First one, global AppSec in San Francisco, being in person again, end of this year in November. Welcome to the second day of our conference. Uh, this morning, I am uh, honored to introduce you uh, to Astrid Osenbrug. I think it's a terrible name for non-Dutch speakers, as the same for mine for non-German speakers. Astrid, uh, I can talk forever to introduce you. Um, you're very experienced. You have been a system admin in the early, uh, more than 20 years ago. You have been a member of the parliament in the Netherlands. You are uh, involved in the LBGT uh, uh, movement. And now I see you also in the Dutch responsible, uh, the Dutch Institute for Vulnerability Disclosure. What a name. With no further ado, I think let's get the floor to Astrid, please. Yes, good morning. Uh, afternoon, whatever, <laughs> wherever you are. Uh, I'm gonna uh, give you a talk about helpful hackers and especially the way we see the digital uh, life through our, our eyes. Uh, first, a little introduction of who I am. Martin already uh, gave some stuff away. I was a member of parliament. Before that, I was a system administrator for an uh, ISP, Internet Service Provider, Access for All, maybe some people know it. For uh, Now I'm also um, the president of COC Netherlands, that's the oldest still existing LGBTI uh, organization in the world. Uh, we are 75 years old and I'm also a, a mom in real life and a cyber mom for a lot of uh, well, uh, young hackers, I will t uh, tell you a little bit more about that later. And uh, well, I'm an activist and uh, uh, as you can see in the pictures, but I also uh, had some uh, meetings with uh, our minister, uh, president from the Netherlands, uh, Mark Rutte, who signed uh, the rainbow uh, uh, stat uh, statement. So uh, I hope in the Netherlands, LGBTI will get a better place and we all get our equal rights. So that's in short who I am. And uh, well, one of the things is also I'm very into the hackers community. Um, and speaking of the hackers community, uh, um, I think you may know us, have heard of us because one of our founders, uh, Victor Gevers, uh, had, uh, 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 well, <laughs> I wanted to say pleasure to hack the Twitter account of uh, uh, Trump two times, not one time, but even two times. He tried to warn him, uh, they didn't respond. So after a, 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 well, some time he got to talk to the people who could fix it. So it took a long time and we even asked the Dutch government to uh, help us and they did. Uh, and another thing uh, uh, David they did is um, uh, the Kaseya uh, zero day hack. Um, and we were almost there to make it uh, to save the day, but we tripped at, uh, at the finish. So uh, that was a, a painful moment, but also a good moment because we really did a lot. So to stop this, but at the, it felt like at the fi finish we tripped. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history and uh, the future of uh, Day for Day. Uh, in um, October 2018, we really started, uh, and we is Victor Gevers, uh, Chris van het Hof and me, uh, because we thought that the world has to be a digital safe place for everybody. And for me, it was really, really important because uh, around my 30, uh, um, age of 30, I, uh, I was divorced and my only lifeline to the rest of the world, I was a single mom with two little kids uh, and my only place to uh, get knowledge, uh, to educate myself, to make friends, to talk to other people was the internet. So for me, it felt like a very, very safe place. Uh, I met a lot of people, I learned a lot, I even 
uh, found a job through the internet in, in those days. So um, for me, it's really important to keep it a safe place. So people like me, who maybe for them, it's a lifeline at a moment in their life, it's a safe place so you can meet, meet new people. Um, so that's why we started because we all, the, uh, the three of us, we had the same ideas about that. Internet has, has to be a safe place. Systems ha uh, have to be safe. Uh, so we started uh, day to day uh, .nl, uh, and then we found out that there's also it, it was really Dutch. Uh, that also we had to uh, scan the whole world because internet doesn't stop at uh, at the borders. Uh, so we also made C Cert Global, and then we thought we have to learn our kids to do it on a safe way. So we started day to day Academy, uh, and because we get a lot of uh, funding uh, these days, we also started day to day fund. So I will explain later what all these uh, organizations uh, do. Let's start with the D in DIVD. The D stands for Dutch. You could somehow get that, uh, I think. And the D, the Dutch, stands also for the Dutch mentality. Uh, we think, we believe in an open, honest, collaborative and for free mentality. Um, and we try to, to get that in, uh, in a uh, code of conduct. It's on our site, you can read it because we made some uh, agreements together because we want to be open, because we want to be honest, because we want to be collaborative and we want to be, uh, we do it for free. We also need to uh, set up a set of rules. And uh, so we did with the, code of conduct. Um, but we also have an international reach. Uh, and that's a bit weird because it's Dutch, but um, internet doesn't stop at the border, as I said. So you can scan, but then you scan the whole world because you never know who is behind uh, IP address. The I stands for Institute. And we started the Institute with uh, Victor, Chris and Astrid, uh, then Frank Breda came and uh, some other people came and we had a small group of people uh, and it grew, uh, grew and it grew and it grew and now we have a, uh, an, uh, uh, yeah, we say the Dutch Raad van Toezicht, but it's the, uh, no, well, it's a board uh, above the board, they just uh, look at us. We have a di director now and we have uh, seven uh, different uh, organizations uh, with all their, uh, they all have their own team lead. And under their, uh, the team lead, there are different stuff all these people do. And that's a lot. So we started at a small, as a small volunteer organization. And now we have about 120 volunteers and you all have to manage that. So that's a weird thing because we are all like hackers and uh, nerds and geeks and whatever. And we're, we all think we are not really organized. And if you look at this picture, you see we are very organized. The V stands for vulnerability. And uh, well, we've, we've we're thinking about what kind of vulnerabilities uh, are we looking for? And we, uh, we split it up in three kinds of cases. There's the critical uh, vulnerabilities, like uh, when you have the Kaseya case or like the Lock4J, or uh, it's just a vulnerability. Everybody knows it's in the news. And then we start scanning because we uh, want to make sure it gets off the internet as soon as possible or out of the systems. Um, then we also have the data leaks where we get, uh, where we can see databases where there are uh, personal credentials. And then we're going to start uh, uh, make sure the people whose uh, credentials are leaked to make sure they get, a not uh, get notified because, well, we all know if your uh, password and your uh, uh, login name is uh, not uh, noticed somewhere, well, people can make uh, use of that in a bad way. So you have to be sure these people get notified as soon as possible. And then the third uh, vulnerability we 
uh, do is zero days. Uh, some of our researchers uh, fi uh, find zero days themselves. Sometimes we get them uh, offered by other people, uh, researchers who found uh, a zero day and don't want to uh, get all the hustle to start talking to the vendor or to the uh, uh, the software uh, developer and they just say please um, can you do something about it and then we take it as the uh, DIVD and we talk to the vendors and the software developers and this was the case in Kaseya for example um, then you see if you look at the critical uh, uh, vulnerabilities you get uh, it gets in the news and if you see like Citrix was one of the uh, big vulnerabilities and then we started uh, scanning um, uh, Pulse Secure, the exchange proxy logon um, and, and then we just start uh, scanning, scanning, scanning and make sure that all the systems every time we see a system that has the vulnerability we send an email uh, if they don't respond to the email, we uh, uh, e will even phone them. We will try to find out uh, who the person is who can fix uh, the vulnerability because we don't fix the vulnerabilities. We only scan, we find the leaks, and then we uh, notify the people who can fix it. For victim uh, notifications, uh, we use our own, and but also uh, third-party research. Sometimes other people tell us we found this uh, uh, database, it's open, blah, blah, blah. Well, we had the Mirai, uh, we had the warehouse bot, we had Telegram, um, and we noticed that it's often very uh, difficult for public agencies to handle because sometimes even uh, uh, you need the government to uh, tell uh, organizations that they have a leak, but somehow there's always something wrong with uh, uh, that the law will uh, work against them or something. And we are a volunteer organization. We can just uh, notify everybody we want and they can like it or not, but we are working uh, within the lines of the law. And that's different for a volunteer organization than for a company or for a government. And then we have the zero days. We uh, Kaseya uh, was uh, found uh, by one of our researchers. We had Fembu. Uh, uh, so that's also what we do. We do a lot of um, uh, research uh, in software and sometimes we find uh, the leaks ourselves and we start talking to the vendors or the uh, developers to make sure they fix uh, the leaks in the software because it's an accident waiting to happen because if we if our researchers find it then bad people will find it too so it's always a race against the clock and that's what happened with Kaseya uh, we just did the race against the clock and then the most important part I think is the disclosure uh, because that's what the mission of uh, the IVD is. Because we aim to make the digital world, world safer, and this is the most important, uh, important thing. By reporting vulnerabilities we find in digital systems to the people who can fix them. Uh, and we also have a global reach, but do it Dutch style, open, honest, co collaborate, and for free, I already told you. But the, the most important part is we report the vulnerabilities that we find in the digital systems and we, we report them to the people who can fix them. And that's a really uh, important part because we really need your help. So we have our own uh, AS. We scan from the range uh, uc uh, 194573.0 slash 24. So we have our own IP range. And if you ever get a report and you're not the one who can uh, fix it, but please forward it to the person who can, because what we do is, like we did at uh, Kaseya, we found a lot of uh, open instances, uh, we started uh, scanning, we started uh, uh, sending out the reports, and then uh, in, in a few days, you see it's the, all the leaks are going down, so it really works, it really helps, and well, we are a bunch of uh, 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 volunteers 
and we can't do it alone. So this is what we really need. Uh, for the disclosure, we are reporting it to the ones that fix. And we also work together with uh, trusted information sharing partners. Uh, one of the partners is the National Cybersecurity Center, uh, Digital Trust Center, Digital Trust Center in the Netherlands, but also the, uh, the search. Uh, uh, so there's, and maybe that's also the Dutch culture, because we work together with the government, with organizations, with companies, whatever, just to make the world, a, the digital world a, a better place. We also have a lot of uh, contacts via the network providers. Uh, and if all else, else fails, we have direct uh, contacts. We phone uh, companies, we phone people to make sure it gets fixed. International, we now have CSIRT Global. It's uh, run by Ewart Driehuis. Uh, and they do it uh, in the same way, but only uh, international. So if the leak is not in the Netherlands or the company or whatever, then CSIRT Global will uh, make sure they phone the people or, uh, or go to the people who in that country, like in Germany, America, uh, England, we have a lot of contacts already all over the world, France, Belgium. Uh, so we make the world uh, one big uh, disclosure paradise, uh, I would say. Uh, what we also do is the victim notification. And then we try to uh, uh, contact the victim directly, uh, mostly by email. If they don't respond to email, then we will uh, go to the site operators, we will phone them, um, and we're uh, working together with the No More Leaks initiative, uh, because they do the same stuff also, and we really believe in joining forces together. So together we are strong and make this world a safer place. And the zero days, uh, well, we work within the CVD guidelines, we can we uh, can even make our own CVDs now. Uh, we are reporting to the vendor. Uh, and afterwards, we just uh, treat it like just another critical vulnerability. So we start scanning again. We start uh, 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 reporting it to the people who still has uh, the software uh, on their machine. So circles are round in this case. <clears throat> well, then we go to the institute. Uh, in the, our research, or our ethical hackers, as you wish, there are three levels, levels one, two, and three, where level one is really like uh, you go to showdown, you, you see what's leak, and uh, you do a scan on, on uh, stuff you see there. Level three, uh, two is a bit uh, higher, and level three is really zero day. So uh, you get, as, uh, the longer you are with the uh, DIVD, the more credits you earn and you can uh, grow in level. So it's also a trust uh, issue. Um, and everybody earns the trust uh, by being a volunteer and, and spend time uh, at day to day. Uh, research also uh, work on finding uh, vulnerabilities. They do scanning and they find uh, zero days. We also have our own C-shirt uh, and that works on the triage, they look how big is this? Uh, what the, uh, is this really a, a, a big issue or can we leave it for a week or for two days? Or um, they also take care of the publication. Like if the uh, a journalist phones, they want to make a, a, a story about it. Uh, CSERT will make sure it, it, uh, it, uh, the technical details are all uh, in order. Uh, they also keep the vendor relations, so they take care of uh, when they find a zero day or a, a vulnerability, they, they uh, talk to the vendors. And uh, what's very important, they write a report. So from the day they start till the very end, and all the reports are also on the side of day to day, you can read them. They're very interesting, I think, because you see uh, how every um, uh, 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 leak is handled and uh, from day one till the closing uh, moment. And as soon as it's closed, then the report will uh, be online. 
then we also, because we are uh, growing and growing, we also have an own operations uh, group. Uh, they take care of the scan infra. Uh, I'm not sure if you can imagine how uh, many uh, uh, machines we have running to scan the internet 24 seven, the whole internet 24 uh, seven, yeah, seven days a week. So um, they make sure it's all, uh, it's all up and running. We have our own help desk uh, for the people at uh, the volunteers at day to day with their own questions, but also, uh, well, if a vendor has a question, they can also ask at operations. Uh, they take care of all the applications we uh, use because, well, we are holier, we have to be holier than the Pope. So our applications really need to be in order, uh, uh, make sure we don't have our own leaks, make sure we take a good care of every uh, piece of software we use. And uh, we also want to make, uh, uh, develop our own applications, everything open source, of course. Uh, and we have for every um, uh, uh, group, we have our own website and they take care of the websites too. So it's uh, operations is the, uh, the biggest group, uh, well, the, the, the biggest growing group at the moment. Then we have the HRM, the, the human research manager, they take care of the onboarding and offboarding. Uh, because every volunteer can uh, send, I want to be a volunteer at day day. Then you get a talk, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, we talk about training because we think every volunteer should uh, be part of uh, uh, day to day and also feel they can grow themselves. So if you are a help desk uh, person, maybe you want to learn more about um, uh, research, then you can learn more about research and then you talk about what training do you need, uh, whatever. We also have a counselor because we also want to be a safe uh, space for everybody. Uh, uh, we want to be inclusive and diverse and everybody should feel safe. So we really have a counselor who can, uh, well, if you ever think like I'm not treated well or I don't feel safe, you can talk to the counselor and he or she will help you uh, to figure things out. So that sounds very professional too. And it's funny, the, well, I think it's funny because we are a volunteer uh, group of hackers and we are very well uh, organized uh, as you see. And then we have our own communication uh, uh, group. Uh, they take care of the PR. Uh, they do the publication of uh, blogs. We also write blogs. Uh, they make sure we can, uh, we can be at events, but also make our own events. For the people in the Netherlands, we have hack talks. That's really uh, nice, but they're mostly in Dutch. So that's, um, well, if you don't speak Dutch, it's a bit hard, but the hack talks are always very interesting because we there's people who has uh, no background in uh, tech or hacking or whatever, and there's a lot of people who have, and then they just start uh, a conversation together and we learn from each other. So you, uh, uh, last time we had uh, somebody who was hacked uh, and he, he told what it did to his company, how much time it costs, how much stress, and um, it was really uh, good for us to hear because we do a notification, but we never think about from what really happens at the moment, some, some uh, company gets a notification and then you see there can be a lot of stress. So we're also working on that. Um, and we have merchandise like my own t-shirt. I'm not sure if you can see it, but, uh, and we're thinking about, uh, well, spreading uh, uh, the love of day to day. So we want to share more with merchandise like, uh, uh, stickers, uh, t-shirts, whatever. So people will know us uh, all around the world. And then finance. Uh, I was the treasurer for some time and it really gave me a headache. So I'm glad it's outsourced now because there's more money uh, uh, getting in. So it needs, and then you see that in, uh, in the whole uh, uh, volunteer organization, uh, there weren't much people who are really good uh, at finance in a way. So 
it's no shame to say that we outsourced it and we are very happy we did so uh, and then we also have compliance as i said we have to be holier than the pope because we are really well people are looking at us uh, and we have to do it in a very good way so we have our own security officer we have a privacy officer we have a CISO, uh, and we also have our own com uh, committees uh, one of them it's really important because uh, maybe I should have started with that, but ethics is the number one lesson at day to day. We do our work in an ethical way. Uh, for us, it's a no brainer, but well, I met some people um, who aren't that much into ethics. So that was really a, a, a thing we thought, well, we have to start our own committee and make sure that ethics is a, uh, a subject and diversity and inclusion because in the IT world there's a lot of talk about why aren't there uh, that many women or why uh, why is it all uh, the same people and I think as long as you don't talk about it it will never change so if we address the problem and we start thinking together uh, how can we fix it I think that's a better way than uh, just always say like, oh, there are no women in cybersecurity, because I know a lot of women in cybersecurity. So that's uh, also very important to think to yourself and uh, what words do you use? How do you talk to each other? How do you uh, address other people? And um, well, there's a lot of lessons uh, learned. Uh, our CISO uh, started her own uh, a group of people who wanted to, uh, want to learn how to how it is to be a CISO. So now we have four people who are training themselves in becoming a uh, chief information security officer. So uh, that's also the the fun part about being part of a volunteer organization. You don't get paid in money, but you get paid in knowledge and uh, in training. Um, and then we get to the CSERT Global because uh, we are really proud because uh, CSERT Global is also a volunteer led uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, but only there are uh, uh, more internationality uh, uh, organized, yes. Uh, so they do the same as we do at the, uh, they, uh, DIVD. Only they aim to find, report, and disclose vulnerability globally. So as we scan in the Netherlands in a in a group uh, of Dutch IPs, how to say, it, but, or or we just scan and uh, uh, notify the Dutch uh, people, organizations, whatever. Uh, CSERT Global is notifying the people all around the globe. So. Uh, what we're uh, what they are working on is an international cooperation this building chapters around the globe uh, we look at OWASP uh, uh, to learn from OWASP how you do that and one of the chapters uh, that will start real soon I think is in uh, England and that would be great and then we try to well conquer the whole world uh, by making all these chapters uh, because what we found we met that uh, um, what happened is that the laws and uh, regulations uh, are different in different countries and we know the dutch law i know the dutch law but i don't know everything about other countries so it's really important for us to have chapters in other countries so we can learn from them uh, how you make a good um, uh, disclosure is there a rule uh, what are the uh, the chances uh, you get arrested. So we have to really fi find out uh, so and to spread um, the legal risk, we started C-Shirt Global. So it's their, it's their own foundation, but well, powered by the IVD with the same code of conduct, with the same ethic uh, routes, uh, uh, also volunteer led with the same, uh, well, uh, blueprint of uh, day to day. And then we get to my, uh, well, my dream and my, my heart and my everything. That's the day to day academy. 
uh, I started five years ago uh, a, a sort like uh, uh, program to help young hackers uh, to stay out of trouble because uh, I talk to the government, I talk to the police and uh, sometimes they uh, go into a house at five o'clock in the morning and get a kid of 12 years old uh, out of his bed because he hacked something and uh, and the, the kids were like, I did nothing wrong. I just looked there and I could uh, buy some stuff uh, without paying and uh, they think it's all fun. And, um, and we really want to teach the kids uh, about ethical hacking, um, that you can really make a, earn a living if you want, um, that they are uh, good people and not the bad like they are treated sometimes by school because a lot of our youngsters, uh, the first thing they do is hack their uh, school. And then some schools uh, are not amused and send them home or take away their computer or whatever. I think that's a really dumb idea to do. Uh, the other uh, side is sometimes you have schools, they are really happy with kids like that and they uh, ask them to scan their network, help them to make uh, school a better place, a, a more safe place. Uh, what, uh, and sometimes we get youngsters who are not going to school anymore because uh, they don't feel welcome or they don't understand what's asked of them. And when you talk to them, they are so brilliant with other stuff. And we think at Dave Day Academy, we can learn them uh, the other stuff we can make sure they get a good future uh, because these kids are our next generation we need uh, their brains we need their skills we need everything but the schooling in the netherlands is not ready for kids like this this so my heart is really with uh, the kids from the academy uh, I dropped out of school when I was 15 and uh, I made it to a member of parliament. So for me, only the sky is the limit. And I know I can get the very best out of every kid, especially our, well, our little hackers, uh, hacker kids. So, uh, and what can we teach them? Uh, uh, we now have an online uh, uh, place where uh, we want to fill the lessons with, well, for me, the fundamentals are really, uh, uh, the OC layer, for in, uh, instance, because nobody ever learns about the OC layer anymore. I think that's weird. Uh, we learn them about the ethical aspects because I think you can be a good hacker without be uh, also take the ethical uh, aspect in your whole, uh, well, in your whole life. Um, we teach them about a C-shirt, what it is, what can you do there? Uh, what uh, skills do you need? Uh, we learn them about incident response because they are a lot of uh, online. They find a lot of stuff and then they send a mail to somebody say, hey, uh, stupid, uh, you have a leak in your software. Uh, maybe you should fix it. And then they get to me and say, uh, Astrid, uh, <laughs> I send a mail, but I never got an answer. No, because you didn't do it in the right way. So we're teaching them how to make a good uh, responsible disclosure. What report do you send? Uh, uh, and it's working because, well, they get happier every day. Uh, we learn them about social engineering. We learn them about investigation online, uh, open source intelligence. Uh, uh, we learn them about malware research, offensive uh, security. We learn them all the stuff we know. And the funny thing is, um, it's all in our heads. Uh, we have all the volunteers at DVD are all uh, professionals, but we all teach most of our knowledge we teach ourselves to ourselves so now we try to get it all out of our heads and put it into lessons uh, to learn uh, well the youngsters and the, also the students from the uh, university whatever because we think it's really important to learn all the stuff and not only uh, on uh, on paper but you should also do it you should do a real online investigation uh, before you go to uh, say, well, I have my uh, 
I have my uh, diploma, but you never did an online uh, investigation. That's not something that computes with us. So, um, and last but not least, we also have the DIVD fund uh, because we also get donations. Uh, uh, and we were thinking like, okay, we get uh, donations. Uh, what do we do with them? Some of the money, they say, well, you, uh, we got money from Huntress. And they said, well, we give you a, a piece of the money. We want you to build a zero day uh, platform. Uh, and you get the other part of the uh, money and you can do whatever you want to do with it. Um, so we were thinking about, okay, uh, what can we do with the money to make the world a, a, a better place? Uh, and then we thought, well, maybe we should make an own foundation also, the uh, DIVD fund. Uh, we put the money in there and people can uh, uh, sign in for a project. And uh, the only thing we ask is that they contribute to the mission of Dave Day uh, from Dave Day self or uh, external parties um, who have the same mission vision and that's how to make the digital world safer. So uh, the fund is still growing. We are not that rich uh, at the moment, but we, uh, the more donations we get, the more um, uh, projects we can finance. Uh, and that would be really, really uh, nice because together, I said it a few times, together we are stronger and together we can really make the digital world safer. Uh, and uh, from the, uh, DIVD, we do it from out a uh, hacker's mentali uh, mentality, but also the software has to be safer. Also what OWASP uh, does, uh contribute to that mission uh so there's a lot of open source uh, projects at the moment that can really help to make the world uh digital safer and we want to be part of that we want to fund that so uh that's why we started uh day to day fund and i think i'm talking too um uh, fast so i'm just gonna uh tell this again about the whitelist we have um, because it's really important. We scan with this uh, AS all the systems at the internet at this moment. And there are uh, systems that are vulnerable. Uh, we send in a, 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 a notify and not all the notifies get uh, to the right place. So it's very, very, very important for us that uh, the notifiers get to the right people so they can uh, start uh, fixing them. Because the internet is broken. We, I think we already know that. And <laughs> our dream at day to day is that we fix it together and we can all uh, make it a place again where information uh, can be found, where uh, we can uh, communica uh, communicate with each other. Because if one thing of the COVID learned us, we can't live without the internet. We can't live without systems. We can't live without communicate with each other in a digital way. Um, so it's very important that we save the internet, that we fix it, that we help each other. Um, yeah, and that's, I think what I really wanted to say. So now I can, Oh, this was. Oh, yeah, this is uh, more the 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 questions. If you have general questions, uh, you can find us on Twitter. Uh, we have our own website. Uh, uh, if you want to be a volunteer, you can go to davidave.nl and become a volunteer. So, um, yeah, I can talk for hours, uh, Martin. But <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, Astrid. Uh presentation to know what Davy, uh, Davy, Dave, the the IVD, I hope you yeah. in the presentation does. We have uh, actually two questions. Uh, one is, uh, to whom did you outsource your finances? Another volunteer organization? Uh, no, the two. Uh, uh, we uh, also have our own uh, contour. Uh, uh, what do you say? Office. Yeah. We have our okay. own office, and that office also. Uh, 
uh, has their own finance uh, 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 organization. And the finance organization is uh, a, a company that's taking care of uh, foundations. So it's also volun not volunteer, but they work a lot for volunteer organizations. And it's also a small group, so. Okay, so another question is, is the DIVD Academy open to everybody around the world? Yes, because, uh, well, it, uh, it's from two sides. Uh, we have an online version and we're gonna fill it with uh, online lessons. And uh, we wanted uh, to do it in the same way as we do at the uh, DIVD, uh, open, free, uh, everybody can use it. Uh, and we also do uh, classes and they will be held in, uh, in Netherlands in The Hague with a small group. And uh, then they get like more masterclass like uh, BGP hijacking, we talk about uh, fundamental uh, 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 non-technical -tech shit, that's what it is, NTS. Uh, uh, so we do more uh, deepening about subjects, uh, but the online lessons will be available for everybody who wants to uh, well learn uh, more, because what I see, and it really annoys me, is that uh, you get cyber training everywhere around the world and you have to pay like 10,000, whatever, uh, for lessons. It's not that hard. Everybody can learn it if you're interested. And I I'm really from the uh, school, of information wants to be free. And it's our, yeah, it's our, everybody knows how to handle uh, a, a, a subject and why should I earn 10,000 uh, whatever dollars or euros for uh, a simple lesson because I have the knowledge. No, I want to share my knowledge and I can earn money in other ways. So yes, everybody can take lessons and they will be free. So yeah, that's definitely something that we can work together also because we have some free available material as always we want to show you. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, there was a question: Are the DIVD Academy videos only in Dutch? Uh, yeah, we had. Uh, there's one video from Hack Talk, and I think it's in Dutch. So, but we try to um, make more material and do it in English. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, we have another question. So it's a good one. Um, one says, great, thank you so much. Do you have any way to register ASNs or other IP arrangements to ensure you can reach us? Think about what Shadow Service has done with their subscription service. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question good enough, but we work together also with Shadow Server. Um, and we have all the IP ranges. Uh, we just scan the whole internet. and. Some uh, people block us, um, our, our range, but well, that's their loss, I think, because our uh, uh, mission is to make the internet a safe place. And we do that from, uh, um, from out our, uh, from our own range. Sorry, yeah, I was thinking about it. Yeah, I just put a question in your uh, uh, chat so that you have the complete question. Oh. <laughs> Oh, to uh, Richard, uh, yes, um, uh, there's also, yeah, but that's the Dutch uh, version. We have the cyber, the cyber security meltpunt and people can put their, uh, or share their IP addresses uh, with, uh, with that. Uh, and maybe CSER Global will do that, but I'm not sure. At Dave, Day, we work the other way around. We, we don't, we scan everything. So we don't, uh, let people uh, uh, opt in, but you can opt out uh, by uh, saying, "Well, I'm gonna block this uh, this AS." Cool. Uh, let me see. Full-time workers for full-time workers, does the IVD has a minimum amount of hours required in order to take part for volunteers? Yeah. Uh, no, because uh, some people uh, have two hours a week and others have like 20 hours a week. And 
uh, especially the research part is really uh, uh, intense because we, we do scan the whole internet and it not stops uh, with that, but it starts with that because if you get a range and you know, then you have to send the notifications. A lot of uh, it is done autom uh, automated at the moment, but uh, the most of the work is in the, uh, the messages you, you get back like, okay, the abuse address is not working, the info address is not working. So then you have to really have to uh, look up the IP address, have to look up, okay, who's behind that uh, machine. And then you can try to uh, get to them in another way. And that's cost more time. And, uh, but you can do, uh, say if, I, if you have two hours left, you can, or if maybe six hours a month, it's also what would you like to contribute to day to day? I think uh, as we discussed earlier, so there's this initiative to have the security.txt, a security text file, with contact details, how to report a vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, I think, as you said, that some companies are afraid to get hacked when you uh, actually put it on the website. Yeah, we also sometimes get uh, uh, messages from, uh, uh, we don't want you to read our security text, or they, <laughs> they take the text away, or, yeah, that, that's also a thing maybe we have to, think about we still have a lot uh, to teach other people and companies and whatever because they make themselves vulnerable because they are afraid that we are the bad guys but we are the good guys so that's yeah. why i do talks like this to explain that we really want to make the internet a safer place for everybody so our kids can enjoy it too uh, uh, like single moms single dads uh, if you're isolated you can still talk to other people because in a safe way and not while you're online then your uh, bank account get hacked or something that's not really what you want if you're already in a position where you're well feeling down or whatever so yeah i think that it's uh, awareness and awareness spreading it's yeah. one yeah. big thing we still have to do i think there was a nice story once from uh, Victor, when he said he had to travel to Africa and uh, one government said, what should we do to get more secure? And he said, first of all, don't execute your hackers, right? It's like, yeah. let them hack, let them help you. Uh, I think that's a different when you go to different cultures or uh, countries where understanding of hacking is differently. I think the Netherlands, they're quite liberal on that part. Is yeah, that well, some... yeah, I didn't tell <laughs> the whole story, but it helped that I was a member of parliament uh, from 2012 to 2017. I was the one and only real, uh, uh, well, technical uh, uh, par uh, member of parliament. And I helped the people who wanted a responsible disclosure uh, uh, to get that in, in the law. I helped it as, an, and that really helped because the responsible disclosure uh, uh, really helped our well our uh, foundation also to do what we uh, do now because it's in the law it says you can do responsible disclosures uh, and that's really unique i think for uh, the world that in in the netherlands we started this and now we're uh, lobbying in europe to get it done there and then we hope in america and all around the world so it will help to make the internet a safe place and not because all hackers are uh, criminals. No, uh, criminals are criminals and hackers are the good guys in my uh, humble opinion, that is. Oh yeah, I think, yeah, uh, uh, wasn't it very easy three points? So do it quickly, do it once and report. It's, it's do it quickly, it doesn't mean to hack quickly, but you and don't do break anything, right? You don't do yeah. extortion, uh, but, uh, uh, about the proportional uh, uh, overexposure proof. Yeah. Uh, I just cannot say, I think, the English term for that. But I think it's very uh, advantage to the governments for the other side. It's like, if you just show it, you don't break anything and you don't download data from others. So when you just prove your point, you yeah. don't download all the, the customer's data, just you prove there's a vulnerability and that's enough. And then government said they will not prosecute prosecute you. <laughs> Uh, prosecute no, no. <laughs> prosecute yeah <laughs> prosecute yeah <laughs> my english is not awake yet uh, i think yeah so uh, again another thanks for the keynote presentation very useful
And let's see if there are any other great questions there. So far, I have, I think we answered most of the questions. So it's 10 minutes almost to the next presentation. Ashwin and Ola, thank you so much. I think we can do a slow uh, site uh, uh, promotion. There are hacker festivals like in the Netherlands. We have every yeah. four years one that's differently called. I don't understand the logic behind it, but it's the Dutch. Uh, this year is the MCH, May yeah. Contain Hackers, uh, 22.org. So 20, uh, MCH, I think 22.org, 2022.org. 2022.org, yeah. Yeah. So Hacker Festival in July, uh, Ashton will be there. I will be yes. there with an OWASP village. So uh, let's see if there's some, not much, but there's still some tickets available. Uh, that will be nice. So I, I, let's say, uh, yeah, we do security, they do security, and we have to join forces. And yes. OWASP is about write secure code or write secure applications. And of course, you have to know how to break them. So you don't need that security. Thank you so much for everything you do for You're security welcome. for that. Um, we have 10 minutes until the next presentation. I see that already the uh, people are joining in. Thank you so much. Have a great conference day. Enjoy it. Uh, learn. Um, see you soon. And th thanks, Astrid. Yeah, see you thanks for MPH. having me. Yes.